After you've solved several limits of rational functions, you might start to notice patterns. And I want to talk a little bit about those patterns now. Here's a typical rational function. You have f of x equals, and you have a polynomial on top and a polynomial on the bottom. And for simplicity's sake, I've just written the leading terms of each of those polynomials. So we're going to assume that the numerator is a polynomial of degree n. Degree n. And the denominator is a polynomial of degree m. <clears throat> now we have three cases. Either the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, it's equal, or it's greater. And in each of those cases, something different will happen with the limit of this function as x goes to infinity. Now, if the degree of the numerator is smaller, you know, for example, the numerator is a quadratic, degree 2, and the denominator is a cubic, degree 3, then the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is always going to be 0. Always. If the degrees are equal, so say this is a cubic and this is a cubic, then the limit is actually going to be the fraction of their leading coefficients, a over b. And that's always true. Now, if the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, then one of two things can happen. It's either going to go to infinity or negative infinity. And so you have to decide which, which it goes to based on the algebra, uh, the algebraic structure of the function itself. And the other thing to remember is that these results are also identical for limit as x approaches negative infinity. So it's the same results. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x goes to 0 if the numerator has a degree less than the denominator, and so on. So these are really handy, uh, really handy facts. And using them, you can just glance at a rational function and tell what the limit as x approaches infinity is.